silence on the set. Hello everyone, my name is Liv and today I'm making the most niche video in the world and it is gluing stamps onto my chair while I answer questions that people have sent in to me from Instagram. Because a lot of people don't know that I have a stamp chair and it's just a chair full of stamps and this is the one I film on and I sit in and I love and it is full of stamps from all over the world. There are stamps from Cuba, Finland, Portugal, and just like stamps that I've gotten in the mail for years and years. I'm not that knowledgeable about stamps, so don't ask me about like the authenticity of like stamps and like how much they're worth. I have no idea about that, but I do like collecting stamps because they're interesting. So I have a couple of questions from Instagram and I'm going to answer them while I glue stamps onto my chair. If you are curious and you want to do this yourself, I am going to make a hodgepodge type of glue in order to put these stamps onto the chair. So right now I have some Elmer's glue and I'm going to have to add water to it in order to create the hodgepodgey effect. And then we'll get to gluing stamps onto a chair while I answer questions because this is the video of your dreams, clearly. We all wanted this. So I'm going to glue the last two stamps of this entire section so I could finally say I'm done with the top of the chair. By the way, you could buy hodgepodge at Michael's. Will I buy it myself? No, because I could just make it. Elmer's glue and water, that's all you need. But some people like buying hodgepodge, but really it's really just Elmer's glue and water. Well, you put the hodgepodge beforehand and then you put it on top to glue the stamp down. Because we all know you're gonna try this at home on your own chair. The first question is going to be a frequently asked question in the comments, and I'm going to answer it before you can type it out. Where did I get this Daisy Jones shirt? I got it from Penguin Random House when they sent me a copy of Daisy Jones and the Six. It is a very rare shirt, so I did not purchase this shirt. It was given to me, so I have no idea where it's from. The first question is, if you could live in any movie, what would it be and why? So I thought of this question long and hard, and I'm gonna say something basic because I would love to live in Roman Holiday as Audrey Hepburn because I wanna be a princess, I wanna hang out in Rome, I wanna go on adventures, and I just want to live her life. I know it's like not a fictional world. I know some people will say like Narnia and stuff, but I would love to live in Roman Holiday or, ooh, another one I thought of, is the Princess Diaries. I would love to live in Genovia because Genovia just seems like a wonderful country and I think it would be a wonderful place to live. And having Maya M Metopolis, Metopolis, oh my god, I don't know her last name. Having Maya as a queen would be wonderful. The next question is, do you have any siblings? If so, how many? I have one and he's holding the camera. So he's, he's my brother. And if you follow my Instagram, you will know that he takes most of my photos on Instagram because he's like a professional photographer, which is why he's holding the camera. So the next question is, what is your favorite book genre? So I thought it was contemporary because I read a lot of contemporary books and I enjoy them a lot, but I would have to say historical fiction is the type of book genre that I resonate with the most and affects me the most because I love learning about a piece of history that I previously did not know about and I love just learning because you not only get to like explore a new world in a fictionalized setting, but you also get to learn about a piece of history. So I think that's really cool. But a close second is contemporaries. And you're probably wondering why I'm switching sections. <laughs> this is so weird. So this side <laughs> is based off of locations of stamps. So we have like, Arizona, we have Cuba, we have the Cayman Islands, we have Cuba again, we have somewhere from Portugal, and on this side we have characters. It's a specific type of layout I set out for my chair. So the next question is, what parts of Enneagram type 1 do you resonate with the most? So if you don't know, the Enneagram is a personality test. It's split into nine types, number one through nine. So you just take a quiz and you find out what Enneagram number you resonate with the most. And it basically just tells you like your basic desire in life and your basic fear in life. And it tells you how 
you kind of function as a person in society and that what you need in order to feel assured and what you don't like in order to avoid those certain situations in life. So I am an Enneagram type one and I believe I am called the reformer. So an Enneagram type one is someone who is highly organized, someone who needs to be good in every single area of life because they just need to excel Otherwise, they don't feel like they're worthy of praise or recognition. Okay, this is my favorite stamp that I'm gluing on today because it's like a gerbil thing and it is the cutest stamp I've ever seen. So Enneagram type ones. So we are mostly perfectionists. We need to feel good in all areas of life and we don't wanna feel corrupt and we always try and choose the right choice in life. And we see things in black and white, which tends to annoy some people because we will just like openly tell you if you're wrong. This one is from Cuba, so. I wanna put it in my Cuba section. So I resonate a lot with Enneagram type ones. If you listen to Sleeping At Last One song, where he sings, I want to make an anthem worth repeating and like other things like that. It's basically like you want to leave a mark on this world and you want to just impress others, but you're not really worried about the thoughts of others. You're mostly worried about your inner critic, which just like hones in on like all your imperfections and like makes you overthink everything. So. That's basically a type one. I resonate with all of it. The next question is, what is the most recent movie you've watched and loved? So I haven't been watching a lot of movies in August, which makes me very sad. But the last movie I did see in theaters by myself was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of Quentin Tarantino, but that movie was amazing. And I think about it on a daily basis. It's just such a fun, weird Hollywood movie centered around making movies, centered around the Manson murders, and I also just really enjoy the fact that Quentin Tarantino will take a piece of history, twist it, and kind of make it something of his own, which could be seen in bad taste, but I kind of find it to be fun. So he kind of twists the Manson murders and makes it something of his own, and it was just really enjoyable. I thought that Brad Pitt was a wonderful actor. I thought Leonardo DiCaprio was a wonderful actor they just work really well together and I just really enjoyed it and I think about it on a daily basis which is very surprising because I went into that movie with very low expectations I did not even like think I was going to like it and I ended up really enjoying it and it's a movie that I definitely can rewatch over and over again despite the fact that it's really really long I just really enjoyed it and I'm very surprised about it. And if you want to add me on Letterboxd, which is basically like the Goodreads for movies, I will link that down below because that's where I like review my movies and like talk about the movies I've seen recently. That's the most recent movie I've seen in August. The next question is, how are your plant babies? So I have a fern, I have a, oh man, I always forget the name of it. I have succulents and I have a poth those and they're all doing really well. My dad actually bought one of those stick things that you could put into the plant to see how much water is in them and I found out I've been overwatering them which hasn't really hurt them. They're like flourishing, they're enjoying life, they're thriving, they're doing better than all of us combined but I have to cut back on the water. But they're thriving, I love them. After seeing Jenna Marble's video about her plants, I just was really compelled to buy my own plants just to take care of them because it's so fun to see plants kind of grow and flourish and just like taking care of them is like really rewarding in a way. I want to get more. My life goal is to get a cheese plant and every time I tell people about my cheese plant dreams they don't know what I'm talking about but if you google cheese plant and you look at the plant it's just like such a tumblery instagrammy looking plant and I want it so bad but they're so overpriced so that is one of my dream plants to get in case you're wondering about my plant dreams. The next question is, is there a fictional character, book or TV or movie that you think matches your personality? So I have a list. The first is Evelyn Hugo. I just match her personality so completely to the point where I just feel like I'm Evelyn Hugo and we are one in the same. 
and I feel like if you know me personally, you know I have the same energy and the same attitude as Evelyn Hugo, and I'm not afraid to show it. And another character I resonate with is Polly Shelby from The Peaky Blinders. Her attitude, her spunk, her lack of fear of just standing out in a crowd and speaking her mind is something that I personally identify with. Another character that I resonate with is Jack Skellington because we both love Halloween more than anything in the world and I feel like we match personalities and also body types considering I have the same lankiness as Jack Skellington. Another character that I feel matches my personality is Mrs. Maisel from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Mostly in her spunkiness and her outspoken attitude and her love for fashion, I feel like we would be best friends because we would have the same exact personality. Another character that I feel like I am is Monica Geller. I, she is definitely a type one in the Enneagram types. She is a perfectionist, she is controlling, and I feel like we are the same exact person and I just, I relate to her so much. Even though she tends to be a little bit annoying and sometimes I don't like her character on Friends, I still think that I have like the closest personality to Monica Geller. Another character I relate to is Belle, which is very basic to say on book two because like, wow, she likes books. But it's true. I feel like we all resonate with Belle because she loves to go into fictional worlds and just kind of lose her herself. And I just love her attitude and I love her ability to stand up for what she believes in and who she believes in. And the last two characters I resonate with are Cersei and Lito from Sense8. Lito because he's so dramatic and he's so loud and just like, oh, he's so dramatic. And that is me on like a daily basis. And Cersei in terms of attitude, the way that she just carries herself, the way that she's not afraid to be unliked, and the way that she just composes herself and takes over a room. I feel like that's me when I'm under a stressful situation and I love her so much and you could fight me on that. Another question is, what's one thing you hate to read about in a book? And it is pirates, space, and the ocean. I will not read a book about pirates. I do not care, despite the fact that I love Pirates of the Caribbean so much. I will not read a sci-fi book. I only like about two space books and that's very rare for me. And then the ocean, I'm just deathly afraid of the ocean. That's like my number one fear. I refuse to go in it anymore and I don't want to read about it because it, nope, nope. Just thinking about the ocean, no. We, we don't like the ocean. It's too unexplored, it's scary. We don't know what's in there. The Loch Ness Monster could be in there. The Kraken is real. No, we're not going in the ocean anymore. Another question I always get every single time I post to ask me anything is, how did I work for Book Riot? Well, I went onto their website and I applied and I got in and that's how it works for most jobs. So that's how I work for Book Riot. And, and a very frequently, frequently asked question that I got was, do I like BTS? And if so, who is my bias? I feel like I've said this multiple times before, but I do like BTS and Jimin is my favorite boy in that group. So Jimin is my favorite, and my bias wrecker, because a lot of people also ask for that, is either V or Namjoon. It depends on the day, it depends on what video I'm watching, but those two are also my favorites. I feel like they're all my favorite. The next question is, what camera do you use? So currently, what I'm filming on is my brother's camera, specifically for this video, but for every other video that I film, it is with my Canon 70D, which I named Thomas Shelby. And it is my life, it is my love, it is my favorite camera in the world. Say the lens though. I don't know the lens. <laughs> my brother said to say, the magic is in the lens. Don't ask me what the lens is though. I'll link it down below because Whenever I carry that camera around, people always ask me about the lens and I'm like, 
Um, it's not my lens, it's my brother's lens, but it's magical and it makes all my videos look pretty. But currently we are filming on a Sony and a Canon because we love versatility. Next question is, do you have any audiobook recommendations? I love audiobooks. Remember like last year when I said I don't like audiobooks? Wow, I don't know her. Oh god, this stamp is going through it. Well, this stamp is not going to make it. Some audiobook recommendations would be any Elizabeth Acevedo book. I think she is the most wonderful audiobook narrator ever. She narrates her own books and she also narrates other people's books as well. Any book read by her is a favorite book of mine. Another audiobook I would recommend is The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. I have the- this stamp is not staying down. I have the physical copy of The Dreamers but I decided to listen to the audiobook randomly because I felt like I could finish it quicker if I listened to an audiobook which was true and it was such an interesting audiobook. It was just such a treat to read. It was so atmospheric. The audiobook narrator did a wonderful job and I just really enjoyed it. It was a surprise audiobook book that I didn't expect to be like wowed by but I was and it was just wonderful and I feel like people would like the book more if they read it on audiobook because I know it's very atmospheric and like somewhat boring but the audiobook made it feel like a tv show was playing in my mind and I also have another audiobook recommendations video which I will link down below because I have more audiobooks to recommend but you could just Watch that video if you want. I'm so full of Elmer's glue. This Batman. Come on, Bruce. Oh, we love that. We love trains. My next question is, do I have any other hobbies besides reading? And yes, I'm an interesting type of person. I have layers to me. So I don't just read. I love watching movies. I enjoy watching TV shows, but I can make an essay about how TV shows are just not a superior form of storytelling. That's another time in another place. I enjoy baking. I enjoy taking care of my plants because I will die for them. I enjoy stamp collecting, which is like a very soft hobby. It's not taking over my life. Um, what else do I enjoy? What other hobbies do I have? Eating ice cream. Eating ice cream is another hobby that makes my dermatologist sad because my skin is not cute under all this BB cream. <laughs> There's a hair now! Suddenly becomes uninteresting when someone asks me about my hobbies. Oh, I write. I write for Book Riot. That's a hobby slash a job, but y your hobby becomes your job. It's that's that quote, right? You do what you love and then you don't work a day in your life. Is that a thing? Yeah. Next question, super easy. What is your favorite color? Take a quick gander behind me to my wall. That is literally the purple of my dreams. But I'm actually going to paint my room soon. So the purple of my dreams is being taken away. And then the last question is, will you write your own book one day? What are you saying? I'm already writing a book. Will it see the light of day? Psh, who knows? Who knows the future besides Doctor Strange? I would say it's more of a hobby than like a, I want this to be my career because I have other career plans, but it's something that I like to do in my free time and it brings me joy. So those are all the questions that I have for today. Did you enjoy the stamps? Did you enjoy the stamp content? Did you enjoy me hodgepodging? So I still have more stamps to glue onto my chair, which I will do in another time. But let me know if you want me to do more videos like this, just like answering questions while doing random things. If you want to send me stamps, feel free to. If you don't want to send me stamps, keep those stamps for yourself. It's fine. I'm not going to judge your stamp life. Just let me know if you let me know if you also enjoy stamps. This is my weird hobby that I forgot to tell people about, and I just wanted to share it online because I feel like it's interesting to watch people answer questions while doing something else to keep them busy. If you have any questions about the questions that I answered, if you want me to like clarify anything, I will be sure to do that in the comments. But yes, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And I will see you in another video. Goodbye.
I'm covered in Elmer's glue. Now, stamp B-roll. Stamp B-roll.